Some people aren't aware, but there are many different types of kernels available for Linux. And I commonly get asked questions like, which one's the fastest? Which one gives you the best performance? Which one should be using? We'll answer some of these questions and look at some performance metrics when talking about the various different kernels available, specifically on Arch Linux. First off, let's talk about the officially supported kernels that are available to us for Arch Linux. So there's a short explanation of each of these kernels that are available and that are officially supported. I'll put a link in the description below to this page if you want to check it out yourself. So let's talk about these. First, we have the stable vanilla Linux kernel, which basically just keeps you up to date with the rolling release on Arch. Then we have the hardened version, which is a security focused Linux kernel applying a set of hardening patches to mitigate kernel and user space exploits. So basically all hardened means is it's a kernel maintained and built around security first. Then we have the long-term. So the long-term is just a very stable release that only gets updated ever so often. That way you're not constantly chasing drivers and updates and breaking your setup because you're using the latest and greatest, such as the stable rolling release model. A real-time kernel is a patch that allows nearly all of the kernel to be preempted with the exception of a very few small regions of code. We'll talk about this one a little more in depth because there's quite a few people who believe that this will make their systems faster and that's probably not the case, but we'll go into that in a moment. Stick around if you wanna hear about that. And then the Zen kernel, which is a result of collaborative effort of kernel hackers to provide the best Linux kernel possible for everyday systems. So now we can ask ourselves, which one's the best to use? Well, you see some of the use cases here, so stable, at least on Arch Linux is probably what most people use and is generally available. Then we look at the hardened. If you're worried about security, this might be something to look at. Long-term support, if you want stability, you would want to go with this kernel, meaning minimal breakdown since you're pretty much gonna be using the same drivers for a long term. The real-time kernel, very special case for this one. We'll get into it. And then the Zen kernel, maybe this one speeds things up for you, but that's highly based on what these so-called kernel hackers focus on optimizing. So let's now go look at some of the performance benchmark results that comes from Pharonix so we can know the performance results of some of these. So we have the Arch stable, the Zen kernel, the hardened kernel, and the long-term support kernel all being tested. Now note that in these cases, we are using Linux kernel 6.1.7 and kernel 5.15.89 for the long-term support edition. This has been tested on an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X with a system of 32 gigs, an AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT graphics card using Endeavor OS, the rolling edition. So with that in mind, let's go look at some of the benchmark results. So this chart here shows various different colors of kernels that were used and how well they performed against each other using various tests. Now our guide here is up in the top and the 6.05 real-time kernel was actually included in this as well. But basically the stable version is in a red, the real-time is in a darker red, hardened in a teal color, zen in a purple, and a green for the long-term support. But basically everything's about the same until you get to this side of the chart. And what we can tell is pretty much the purple and red on par with each other, but they seem to have on average better performance than the rest of the kernels. So that's in tests like Xenotic, Unvanquished, StressNG, the GNU, Octane, Benchmark, using GIMP, running Yquake 2, and others. Let's dive deeper into these performance benchmark metrics. But before we do, if you want others to understand these kernels and the results here, make sure to smash that like button for me so this video gets out to other people. And after going through about 100 different tests, 96 to be exact, we can now see the number of first place finishes. So I'm going to mark this graph so you understand what actually finished first in most tests, meaning it either compiled quicker, was more efficient, or did things in less time to give you better performance levels. And you'll be surprised that the stable rolling release, I'm gonna denote that by RR, kernel seemed to actually win in around 46% of cases, which is incredible because a lot of people tend to think that the Zen kernel wins out in most cases. And I kind of explained this already before, unless you have a very specific use cases for Zen, the so-called kernel hackers get to decide what to optimize, which doesn't necessarily lead to an overall better system performance. Instead, it leads to very specific things being done well. So you can see then the Zen kernel actually won out around 16.7% of the time 
And right behind that one, we have the real-time and hardened kernel. So you might be asking yourself, with a name like real-time, wouldn't you think things should run quicker? Well, not really. Let's get into that in just a moment and look at our last result. The last result here is a 10.4% of tests won out by the long-term support, which of course isn't a surprise. I forgot to label these two. They're both at 13.5% of wins. But really, this is what we would expect with the long-term support because it's actually quite behind on the version of the kernel. Like I said earlier, this is the 5.15 kernel versus the other ones are in the 6.1 series of kernel besides the real time. So based on these results, most people would want to stick with the stable release unless you got a very specific use case for the Zen kernel. The other ones are probably not the way you want to go unless you want the hardened kernel to focus on security. For things like servers or production environments, that one might be a good choice. But now I wanted to talk about the real-time myth of the kernel being quicker. I know people get confused with this one quite a bit, but the real-time does not mean things happen quickly or without latency. Really, what the real-time kernel does is it gives you predictability with something called preemptiveness. So what do these terms really mean? It's pretty simple. The real-time kernel just allows you to use the CPU in a predictable fashion, which doesn't necessarily lead to better performance. Instead, you know at the CPU level what's actually getting executed at what time, and you get to make more decisions on what gets executed next by the operating system. So again, it's mainly for predictability, not making things faster. In some systems, you really need to have a predictable system in order to know what to do next. For example, in robotics, you would really want a good feedback system that performed in a predictable fashion, whether or not it was quick or not. Let's say you were running a loop that needed to be read every two milliseconds. You would definitely want this task to run at the two millisecond scale without hardly any latency in order to get results back in a predictable fashion so you can act on them in a predictable fashion. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more information about what real-time kernels are and the fact that they are really not meant for a performance boost, but are meant for being able to use your operating system in a predictable manner. So don't listen to people who are telling you, oh, you have to try out the real-time kernel because it's faster or something. The proof is right here in this chart. And thanks to the Pharonix tools, we have this available on openbenchmarking.org. I'll put a link in the description below to this performance benchmark of kernels. Also know that there are other kernel editions available, but the ones we talked about today are the main ones and are officially supported. Of course, someone can give you an optimized kernel or you can go searching for one for yourself. Maybe you have a very specific application for your operating system and you want something on the system to run in a very specific fashion where all the performance is based around that specific operation. Now you have a better understanding of the different types of kernels available and their performance. Let me know which kernel you're using in the comment section below, what you suggest to others, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.